G'day guys and gal, it's no secret that I find chaos to be a bit one dimensional and not super interesting. Like every single chaotic character was way more dynamic, compelling and enjoyable to read about before they decided to sell their soul to the forces of hell. Khan was a nuanced man of honor and integrity, been horrified by Sigismund's transformation into a cold ruthless killer. Now he's just like blood for the blood god, I'm gonna kill ya. <laughs> There's about a hundred more examples of characters just like this. However, by large, the Night Lords, especially Talos, remain just as interesting, if not more so, than their pre-heresy counterparts. With their attitude towards the Imperium justified, their complicated relationship with Chaos interesting, and some of them even having moments of regret about how things have played out, wishing they could take it all back and once again bask in the glory of the Grey Crusade. Basically, this is how Trader Marines should be, and if they were, maybe I'd start giving a shit about them. Either way, Talos is a legendary character and someone worth talking about. So much so that I actually had the thumbnail of this video commissioned just for this video, showing off Talos's most legendary moment as he faced down Jan Zar. Before we get started, the 1st of Feb is the official end date for the major minis painting competition. I have been completely blown away by the response to this and received hundreds of submissions, ranging from literal dog shit all the way to gold demon winner tier. Which, you know, makes sense. After all, there is a $10,000 prize pool. We've also finally got our first paint jobs of Ra, the Golden Sun, coming through. Fun fact, did you know that Ra was actually inspired by and based on Imperius from Diablo? Just look at his helmet and shoulder plate. The range has gotten quite big and has a model for most factions now, so definitely worth having a look and browse to see if anything tickles your pickle. Worldwide shipping for only $10, free shipping for orders over $100, and if you order and paint your model by the 1st of Feb, you could win some serious dosh. I just really, really want to see one of you guys give that Space Elf Demon Hunter a go. By far one of the most detailed models we've released to date and easily one of my favorites. Remember to submit your mini photos, either email me at majorkill at majorminis.com.au or just submit it on the website. Today we'll go over the lore of Talos Valkoran to show what a well-written, compelling trader Astartes looks like. Talos remains a masterclass in creating a bad guy that I hope the other GW writers eventually learn from. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> The Night Lords were the black sheep of the family. Their methods of war were distasteful. Conrad Curse was an asshole and widely disliked by his brothers, and the Legion had gone rogue even before the start of the Horus Heresy. They also have easily one of the most justified reasons for betraying the Imperium out of all the Legions. Talos was born on Nostramo, being chosen on that corrupted world due to his supreme intelligence and the help of his physically powerful and skilled best friend Zal. Whilst both kids were little rascals that liked to stir up shit, they weren't one of the hardcore criminals that Nostromo kept sending to the Legion, poisoning its overall culture. As such, Talos made a great Night Lord and was personally favoured by his Primarch and given the title of Soul Hunter, something that sounds badass but turned out to be a bit of a secret joke that Conrad only told Talos about when the punchline was about to hit. Unlike the modern Talos, a vicious warrior and respected leader, the old Talos was an apothecary, the healer for the Night Lord's 10th company. He willingly followed his Primarch and joined the traitor's cause at the outbreak of the Horus Heresy. A, because he was a massive simp for his daddy, and B, he actually agreed with the reasonings for telling the Emperor to get fucked. See, the Night Lords were distasteful and vicious, however, they were wildly effective. What is the greater evil? Invading a world, bombing its cities into dust, and killing 75% of its population over six months? months or kidnapping the royal family's children, then live streaming them getting tortured, mutilated and flayed alive to the world's population, causing the world to surrender. Objectively, torturing children is the way better option. No massive infrastructure getting destroyed, no life wasting wars. So despite low amounts of death and suffering, the Night Lords were shunned and insulted by the other legions. Even though the Emperor created them for this method of war, even the Emperor eventually turned his back on them. When Conrad had a vision of the Horus Heresy and tried to warn his brothers, he was insulted and abused for suggesting the possibility of such things. The Night Lords also felt shit about the fact that after all the worlds they had brought into the Imperium's fold, they were being sidelined and looked down on. So they were like, fuck you then, and declared for Horus. Talos was actually one of the few Night Lords who were present at the Siege of Terra. This is interesting as by this point, Conrad hated the traitor legions almost as much as he hated the loyalists, due to them all bending over and getting raw doggied by chaos. He saw chaos as a weakness, a new master that made pawns out of its servants. So he took the 
majority of his legion to Sagwelsa to create a fortress there. However, Talos believed in his interpretation of the traitor's cause, so he went to Terra with his 10th company and what do you know, a shitload of them died with a few survivors limping back to Sagwelsa. His straight talking attitude, nobility and conviction made him a standout Night Lord, one of the very very few Conrad actually liked, as by this point the majority of the legion had been chosen from the strongest stock on Nostramo, which meant it had been chosen from murderers, rapists and other unsavory criminals. This is why Conrad blew Nostramo up, so that he could try them the tide of shit aspirants, but it was too little too late by then. Conrad would continuously call Talos Soul Hunter, which his legion buddies were jealous of because cool edgy nicknames given by Primarchs were a massive vibe. However, as Conrad low-key performed suicide by allowing a Calidus assassin to cut his head off, he told Talos what the nickname actually meant. Talos would hunt one soul above all others. He would defy his Primarch's final order to hunt this one soul. And he was right. Despite Conrad telling his legion to leave the assassin alone and allow her to peacefully leave after killing him, Talos pursued, cornered, fought, and then killed the assassin. A very impressive feat considering Imperial assassins are generally considered to be significantly more powerful than Astartes. Just look at the fucking Eversaur. With Conrad dead, the Legion began to fracture and then shattered when the Ultramarines attacked Sagwelsa and the Night Lords ran for their lives. Talos decided to remain with the 10th Company under the leadership of Vandrid, an honorable warrior who was a god-tier shipmaster. However, Vandrid had made a deal with the Devil, allowing himself to be possessed by a demon in order to increase his power. However, the demon was able to dominate his will and take control, becoming the Exalted. Talos was still a loyal guy and he had sworn oaths to Vandrid, so whilst he loathed what his lord had become, he still followed his orders. At a similar time, one of his squad mates, Uzas, had begun falling to Korn and would start frothing and chanting Kornite battle cries before a combat operation. This would result in Talos punching him in the face and telling him to shut the fuck up. Talos hated chaos, he saw it as a weakness, not a strength, a tool to be used, sure, but not something to sell your soul for. Other than the Exalted, the 10th Company was quite free of corruption, with their ship, the Covenant of Blood, being one of the least corrupted trader ships around. Talos wasn't just special because he was a cool dude with a strong moral code, his gene seed had evolved and mutated, giving him visions similar to that of his Primarch. Now unfortunately, these visions were complete agony for Talos, and he had accidentally killed fellow Night Lords during them. He would seizure really hard for days on end, seeing futures that would help the 10th Company at the cost of his own health. As such, he was revered as a prophet, and even as the heir to the the Night Haunter due to their shared ability. However, unfortunately for Talos, his body actually wasn't compatible with the Gene Seed. Each vision seizure brought him closer to death. If his Gene Seed was placed in a more suitable host, then they could have endless visions with no downside. But for Talos, he would pop a hemorrhoid and shit blood for each snippet of the future. Talos was the opposite of a kiss ass. When he met Abaddon, he thought the Warmaster was a little bitch, and he rejected his request for Talos to join the Black Legion. So Abaddon shot him and literally threw his soul to the Chaos Gods to try corrupt him. Shit like this is why I don't like Abaddon. However, despite being faced off with a sliver of each Chaos God, Talos rejected each and all of them. Nurgle and Korn weren't really that interested, but Slaanesh and Titsnitch gave his soul a red hot crack. Talos would simply brush them off and return to the 10th Company. He was also a surprisingly wholesome dude. He treated his mortal servants with respect, killing a fellow Night Lord because that Night Lord once killed one of his servants. I wouldn't say he was nice to them though. Harsh, but fair. For example, he told his servant Septimus not to fuck his other servant, a female navigator called Octavia. However, Septimus did end up fucking Octavia and he impregnated her. So Talos beat the ever-living shit out of Septimus, breaking multiple of his bones as punishment. And you know, fair enough. Before Talos' death, which I'll get to because it was wildly badass, he actually freed his servants from their oaths to him, meaning they were one of the very few mortal members of the 10th company to survive. The other 50,000 or so died. Eventually, Vandrid was able to retake control of his body from the demon and he sacrificed his life to save Talos, leading to Talos taking command of the remains of 10th Company. He returned to Sagwelsa to find a human population there, which he used to remind us that despite him having a strong sense of justice, nobility and honesty, he is still a very evil man. The world's population were viciously hunted, tortured and genocided in order to send the Imperium a message that they wouldn't forget. However, something unexpected happened. The Elder Craftworld, Ulf 
Wolf Way sent Jan Zar and a small force of elite Eldar to wipe out the Tenth Company. See, they had had a vision that a legendary Night Lord Prophet would bring pain and doom upon their craft world, so they decided to kill him before that could happen. The Tenth Company made their last den and were slaughtered one by one by Jan Zar. Eventually, the entire warband was either dead or incapacitated, all except for Talos. And Malkarion, but you know, he doesn't count. Talos was outclassed, outmatched, and doomed, yet he did not waver or back down, taking on the Phoenix Lord and putting up a decent fight before losing. However, even when Jan Zar got chased off by a gunship flown by Talos' servants who had come back to save their ex-master on their own volition, Talos refused to be saved telling them that he had to kill Janzar no matter what. And kill her he did. His sword was broken, his armor compromised, and he had literally no chance of outclassing her. On their next encounter a few minutes later, she easily fatally stabbed him before he was like, Lamau, you've activated my trap card, and jihadded her tits off with an explosive device he was holding, ending the life of the legendary soul hunter, but also beating a phoenix lord. His gene seed would survive, however, eventually being planted in a new night lord, who had none of the compatibility issues of Talos, meaning there is now a god tier Farseer night lord who is currently in the process of uniting the night lords back into a legion. Their first target, Craftworld Uthwe. Talk about a self fulfilled prophecy. Now, Talos isn't a legend because he slew Imperial heroes or was the Imperium's arch nemesis. On the scale of things, he didn't actually achieve much, and his death was unremarked by all other than a few Night Lords. However, it was his character that made him so compelling. Post heresy Talos is the same, if not better, than pre heresy. A man driven to do what he thinks is just and right. A harsh leader, but a fair one. If more traitor Astartes were like Talos and his 10th company, they would be an insanely compelling faction. Not just a bunch of hypocrites who drank the Chaos Kool Aid. I highly recommend you guys read the Night Lords trilogy. It's all about Talos and is the first bit of 40k lore that made me actually start liking the Traitor Legions. I've more or less skimmed over three books worth of lore in this video, so if you enjoyed this then you know where to go for further reading. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up a major mini. This is the last chance to be able to order, receive, paint, and submit a photo of your mini, so don't delay. There is even a Lord of the Night model if this video inspired something within you. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more compelling content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.